Good morning to all of you. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord. So this morning, I greet all of you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For those of you listening by social media, it's good to have you joining with us. I'm your worship leader, Michelle Ryan. Delivering the sermon this morning is one of God's faithful servants, Brother Percy Sands. We wish to especially welcome all of you, those first time visitors who are visiting with us for the first time, I should say, and those perhaps who have been here before. But you are our special guest. So if you have been here before, or if you worship, or you have not been here in a while, could you kindly just stand so that we can show our love and appreciation to you. Thank you for coming. We realize that there are many other churches that you could have worshipped this morning. So we pray that God will richly bless you as you are impacted in this service. And to you, our members, you are very special. Without you, there would be no worship service. You are dedicated from week to week, and to you, we are very, very appreciative. I would just like to give a brief overview before we go into the announcements as regards to the renovations. Well, if you are one of many questioning and are wondering, when will we be back into the church sanctuary? Or will we be back into the church sanctuary for Palm Sunday or Easter or otherwise? The answer is likely yes. And hopefully, and prayerfully, yes. Also, as faithful servants, we know that our steps have been ordered by the Lord. Yes, it has been a remarkably long time, one year and one month, worshiping in this auditorium. But we are grateful to still be able to worship joyfully. Notably, when you consider the extent of the work and how much wear and tear our church sanctuary experienced, which was not visible to the eyes, albeit there were no major upkeeps and renovations for more than 30 plus years, especially the church having been built for more than a century ago. When the property board initially started this project, we expected only minor repairs, but we were impacted by major structural repairs, as indicated in previous updates. Now here it is, we began with about 10 persons on the board. Unfortunately, for unknown circumstances, there are only two remaining, Karen and yours truly, and assisted by Reverend Lightboy from time to time. We meet to review the project every day at various times between ourselves. We review the scope of the project and its development by having discussions with the various contractors. In many instances, there were mutually agreed upon time frame for completion, but again, as indicated in previous updates, we, we encountered obstacles, but I must say, at this stage, we are progressing and we are surely on the final lap. An update in reference to the pews and the carpet, the atmosphere of the sanctuary has a neutral color, fresh paint, 
All of the downstairs pews, inclusive of the choir pews, were refurbished, and all of the upstairs pews were rebuilt and are extremely comfortable. Additionally, we are coordinating the upholstery of the pews damaged. The downstairs flooring was replaced, and the upstairs floor, which was termite infested, was repaired. An installation of the new carpet will begin on Tuesday. We have increased the illumination with LED lighting fixtures. As we speak, the electrician is installing the fans within the sanctuary. A new sound system is also being installed within the week. The day-to-day -day coordination and management of the project has been an extremely demanding, time-consuming project. Just working behind the scene to ensure you, the members, will be proud of the original features that serve as a, the, a beautiful reminder of the church just founding while adding touches that freshens up the space. As our church acts upon God's direction for improvement, many have asked about donating towards pews to memorialize loved ones. Should you wish to do so, please contact Karen, Rev, or myself. With God's grace, mercies, sustenance, we will in just a few weeks breathe life into our fresh sanctuary. On behalf of the property board, we want to thank each of you for your prayers, patience, and contributions, and continued contributions throughout the renovation process. Most importantly, we ask for your continued prayers as we see God's amazing hands upon this ministry and our church as a whole. Thank you. Brother Percy Sands now comes to give us an announcement. Good morning, church. I'd just like to bring you up to date of the Methodist Mirror Men conference that began on Friday evening. If you weren't there, you missed a great conference. And for those of you who are wondering what the mirror is, Methodist Mirror Men. When we look into a mirror, we see a reflection of ourselves. The theme is that we let people see Christ in us. That's what the mirror represents. Methodist mirror men. The men of the Methodist church is to show Christ in everything that is done, our actions, our words, not only in the sanctuary, but wherever we go in our walk of life, we're to show Christ if Christ does live in us. We can't show Christ if he doesn't live in us, but we show Christ if he lives in us. So may our actions be seen and people begin to take note that there is indeed a God that dwells within people, the spirit that drives them along the journey of life. Also, too, this afternoon at 4 o'clock, the closing service is an open service for everyone to come. So I'd like to see more of our people attend and be a part of that worship service this afternoon. The president will be the speaker. So we look forward to seeing you there. God bless. Thank you, Brother Percy. On a more sad announcement, we extend our sincere condolences to the Thordeson and Pinder families on the passing of our brother Graham. Graham has been an integral part of our spiritual development in, in, in terms of the music ministry. And we pray God's blessing upon Rosa, Tegan, 
and Vivica especially. And it is our hope that they will stand on the promises of the Beatitude, where God promises that he will comfort those who mourn. He said, blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And we pray that they find solace in God's word. His funeral, I understand, will be, here this, will be held this coming Saturday here in the sanctuary at 2 p.m. And we pray that as they move towards this, that the family will indeed be strengthened. At the rear of the church, we have an art exhibition that was put on by the young people as well as the youth group. And Gia wanted me to express the gratitude to them as well as to have you, the members, view how artistically inclined our youth are. And as they continue in their journey, we pray that God will continue to richly bless our youth who are the church of tomorrow. As we move into our birthday greetings, we birthday greetings are extended to Gwendolyn Johnson, who celebrates on the 12th, Deborah Thompson on the 12th, Juanita Knowles on the 14th, Tianjane Stubbs on the 14th, Dwight Thurston on the 15th, Ruth Cash on the 16th, Sandra Gibson on the 16th, Tegan Thordeson on the 16th, Timothy Pinder on the 17th, Inga Johnson on the 17th, Taylor Roberts on the 17th, Doncio Brown on the 18th. Wow, there are so many March books in this church and celebrants. So we wish all of you Godspeed and that you will be richly blessed as you celebrate another year. We sing happy birthday to them. Let us stand now for our call to worship. And we repeat alternative verses. On this third Sunday of Lent, we continue our journey with Jesus. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord redeems your life from destruction and crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in kindness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is God's kindness towards those who fear him. Let us remain standing as we sing hymn number 188, all ye that pass by, sung to the tune of number 66. Hymn number 188.
remain standing as we repeat together the prayer of affirmation. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered unto Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into Hades. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. have a seat. Our prayer chorus is as printed in the bulletin, following which our pastoral prayer will be led by Brother Percy Sands. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, who has lifted us up this morning into a beautiful day, who has provided for us all through the years, and who has guided us in decisions that we make. So, Father God, this morning, as we've gathered, we've gathered to give thanks. We've gathered to praise, to worship. For as we assemble as a unit, we've assembled together for the purpose of worshiping you. For there is no one else that's worthy of praise and glory and honor. We're humans, dear God. And so often in life we might stumble and fall, but we recognize your goodness and mercy as you lift us from those times when we've fallen. May our hearts be in tune today, dear God, so that because we have come for the purpose of worshiping you, we've come to receive from you because there's no purpose of us gathering here just to sing and then to go out. We've come to gather to hear from you. So touch each one of us today, dear God, that each one of us might receive from you the purpose for which we are placed here on earth. For you have called each one of us to a particular task, May that 
task be revealed today. And knowing that the ministry of your word must be carried on. Not only from a pulpit, but in our walk of life. For those that we come in contact with. Those we pass on the street. Our witness must be for you. If we claim you as our God and Christ as our Savior. Be with those, dear God, who are sick. In particular, those known to us from our congregation. Those who mourn. In particular, we think of our brother who has passed this life into a new life. We think of Rosa Thor Thordeson, Tegan, Vivica. We pray, dear God, that you will surround them. Support them during this time of sorrow and pain and loss. And all the other family members, dear God, that you will be with them. In particular, as they support Rosa and the family. So now, dear God, as we continue in our service, we pray that your spirit might be real to each one of us today. So that we worship you in spirit and in truth. So guide us, Heavenly Father, in this worship time and in the future. For we pray in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be. Offertory prayer, our offertory hymn, sorry, we sing the praise of him, hymn number 196. And our offertory prayer will be led by little Kathleen Pinder, hymn number 196.
Thank you for giving us everything we need and have, and have all good things came, came from you. Please take these gifts and bless them so that they, may, they might help people through this church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Just before Sister Jesse and Sari comes up to do a solo, we would also like to offer our sincere condolences to Mrs. Eunice Sawyer on the passing of her nephew, Bernard Albury of Abaco. Sister Jesse, followed by Asari with a musical solo. Morning, church. The Gospel comes from St. Matthew, chapter 24, verses 3 to 14, 3 through 14. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will this be, and when, when will be the sign of your coming and of the close of the age? And Jesus answered them, Take heed that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will rise and lead many astray. And because wickedness is multiplied, most man's love will grow cold. But he who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Thanks be to God for the reading of his word. Good morning. i 
Thank you, Asari and Gia, for that beautiful rendition, Give Me Jesus. Uh, Ms. Sherry Roberts now comes with the second scripture reading. Good morning, church. The second scripture lead, reading is taken from John 10, 11 to 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons his sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me, I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and they shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This commandment I received from my father. Thanks be to God for the reading of his word. Thank you. I will be remiss if I did not extend a thankful word of appreciation to those committed to serve this morning. We are grateful to you. You are an example of inspiration to others seeking to serve and to that those persons that are listed who served uh, Ms. Kathleen Pinder, Ms. Jesse Underwood, Mrs. Sari Mackey, Ms. Sherry Roberts, and later on in the service, Brother Percy Sands. And to you, the stewards and the communication team, thank all of you. We thank you, especially the communication team. You have been, from each Sunday to Sunday, volunteering your service or otherwise to ensure that persons who are unable to attend are certainly blessed as we worship in service with them. We greatly appreciate you, the musicians, and all of you, the members. Without you, Ebenezer, we will not have a worship service. So thank you once again. We pray as we begin, as we look forward to the sermon, we just want to pray that your hearts and minds be ready to receive what God has to say to his people, then the next voice shall be that of God's servant, Brother Percy Pinder, after the singing of this, Brother Percy Sands. Thank you so much. That after this hymn, the head that once was crowned, hymn number 244.
I would like to extend my thanks as well to all of those who have shared in this service. And thank you, Michelle, for conducting. So we all need to play a part in the worship to our God. Let's bow our heads. Dear God, I pray that you will speak to me. Speak through me. Let the words spoken might be those that you gave me to expound on. And so, gracious God, bless us in this service, and may it be done to your honor and glory. For it's in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior's name we pray. Amen. I've entitled this message, Jesus, the Giver of Life. Jesus, the Giver of Life. Just three months ago, we celebrated the remembrance of the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The love of God, which was so great that he gave his best, his son, our Lord and Savior. Because we had wandered so far, this creation had gone from what he created them to be, to do, that there was no other way. And so Christ came. For God created perfection. And he gave his creation the free will to make the opportunities on our own, making our own decisions. But this is what took humankind far from the purpose for which we were created. The love of God sent Christ. A few weeks ago, we began the Lenten journey remembering our Lord Jesus Christ's journey from the Jordan River into the wilderness, the Mount of Temptation. And scripture tells us that Christ was led in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And we're told that 40 days he fasted and prayed. And then the tempter came. Or did the tempter tempt him all the way through? But we're told that at the end of the 40 days is when the tempter came and realized that after 40 days, Jesus must have been hungry. And so he offered the opportunity for him to make stones into bread. For Satan realized that if he could get Jesus, the Son of God, to be obedient to him, then he would have reached his goal to destroy the will of God for the creation that he made. Make these stones bread. But Jesus responds to us, men don't live by bread alone but by every word of God. Come, let's go to the mountains. Look, come, fall down and worship me. I'll give you all of this. You shall worship the Lord your God. And then he took him to the temple and said, fall down. Throw yourselves down. The angels will come and all of those hundreds of peoples coming into the temple, they will see what's going on. And they will then recognize that you really are the Son of God. And Jesus said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. Satan's attempt failed. But it's coming at the weakest point in Jesus' life to try and destroy him. We can look at it in a different light. Jesus was sent to be tempted, scripture tells us. But we can also look at it 
as Jesus was sent to overcome Satan, for Jesus proved to be the overcomer. Because Satan thought that he could defeat the Son of God. But Jesus proved that he would never bow to Satan's temptation. But isn't this true in our own lives? Temptation comes at the weakest point and tries to manipulate our decisions. But Satan is very crafty. He wants to make us feel that he's doing this for his own good, when all the time he's wanting us to bow to him and worship him and be obedient to him. So let's be careful we don't fall into these temptations that he offers. For scripture does tell us in the second book of Timothy, chapter 3, that perilous times will come and that believers will end up not believing sound doctrine. They're wanting to listen to something else, something that satisfies their hearts. A pastor in the States with a mega church was being interviewed and asked, how do you preach to your congregation when you have so many religious factions there? He says, I preach to make them leave feeling happy. Is this what's going on today? Just making people feel happy? Jesus doesn't say that. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus also is the shepherd of life. He is the good shepherd, it says. Those who hire to take care of the sheep, when problems come, they flee and run away. Jesus is not a false teacher. And he's definitely not irresponsible. So Jesus doesn't fall into those categories. For Jesus is real. Jesus was born to be the shepherd of all human beings. Our Lord stresses the fact that it was not man who forced him to go to the cross. And this is found in our readings in John 10, verses 17 and 18. Our Savior really didn't have to die. He could have called on angels to come and be the support that he needed. Or he didn't have to call anyone, but he could just move himself away. But that's not what he was sent for. His humanity was different from ours. Although he was born as a human, but he was born out of eternity. You see, we begin to die when we're born. Every day in our life is a day left, less that we will be living on earth. For the seed of death are in our body because we are descendants of Adam. We are under the curse of death. These bodies of ours are mortal that is subject to death. And we're informed that sin brings forth death. That's why we die. For we have inherited the stain of sin from Adam. But our Lord Jesus Christ was sinless. While he came into the world with a body that could die it was not necessary that it should die, but because of the purpose for which he was sent, there was no other reason. For Jesus says, there's no one that can take my life. For Jesus' own power gave him the ability 
to live for eternity. But something happened. And it was that four-letter word, love. L-O-V-E, God so loved that he gave. And our Lord Jesus Christ loved so much that he was willing to go to the cross. But if we remember in the garden, Jesus prayed, Father, if it's your will, let this cup pass from me. But it's not my will. It's what your will is. Your will must be done. And so we see here that Jesus gave himself up to be crucified so that we might be set free. We might be set free from our human body, our sinful body, and made anew in Christ. Jesus says, I have the authority to lay it down, and I have the power to receive it. And we ask, what did Jesus mean by giving his disciples this information? If we had lived in that day, we would have wondered what Jesus really was talking about. That he had the power to lay it down, his life, and he had the power to take his life back. That was something new for them. They didn't understand, and neither would we have understood. But because we have the scriptures, we know exactly what Jesus was talking about. For you and I, eternal life is a gift from God. For Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. So Jesus Christ our Savior is the only way to God. And any pastor that will tell you there's any other way to God is making a big mistake. For Jesus himself says it's the only way. And many times in scriptures, it's referring to Jesus the way. For our Savior, the resurrection was not a gift. He was returning to his immortal life after living a perfect life and dying for our sins, this was a right for him. He was entitled to immortal life again because he had fulfilled the mission for which he was sent. God sent him to fulfill a mission. And that's what Jesus was saying in the passage of scripture. I have the power to take my life back. This promise was given. And that is why Jesus could say, I have the right. I'm not making this up. This was the command that was given by my father. That I have the right to take my life again. Jesus was stating here that no one, not the Jewish authorities, Not the Roman authorities. None of them could take his life. But it was Jesus himself who unconditionally committed to laying down his life for our sins. Yes. The Romans in this event were nothing more than the agents in the process that was to take place. The power to take back the life he knew was not of his own. It was of his father, God. And this was the proof needed to let the world know that there is indeed life after death. After we pass this life depends on where we will spend eternity. And this is the promise to you and I. Christ offers a free gift. A free gift, however, we live in a world that thinks the gift offered is of no value because you don't have to pay for it. We live in a world that if people could pay for something, then it would be worth something. But then God knew that 
If the cost was so great, the rich would live and the poor would die. And so it was a free gift to everyone. When Christ came, he came to earth born in a lowly manger, surrounded by the animals in that place. And the same night, angels appeared to shepherds in the field, the lowest of low. They were considered low class in that day. Shepherds out in the field. God sent angels to them to announce the news of the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A star appeared. And who noticed the star? the wisest of the wise. And what did they both people do? The shepherds rushed to Bethlehem to see it. The wise men began gathering themselves together to make a journey to find this, and it, from scripture it would appear that it took close to two years before they arrived at the home where our Lord Jesus was. So we see that Christ came not only for a certain few people, not only for a certain class of people, Christ came for all humans, all his creation, yes. everyone, yes. you and I and the world. Even those that we sometimes think, well, you know, I don't know how God could love them, the conduct and the way they're acting, but God loves each and every one, no matter how deep they go. No matter how dark the valley they find themselves in, God can rescue them. But it takes their belief and faith to accept the gift of life in Jesus Christ. My message today as we journey the Lenten road is Jesus calls all of us to repentance, which could result in a life live for him, for it's only what's done in this life for Christ that will last through eternity. And it's only what's done for Christ that others will see and give glory to God. So may the continuing spirit of Christ, the third person of the Trinity, stir our hearts to the people he's called us to be this morning. So let's bow our heads. Father God, your call goes out to each and every one. No matter who we are, your call is extended. For we see from scriptures that you touched those that were considered to be untouchable. And you sat and talked with those that were considered to be outcasts. Clear our minds, dear God. Clear our hearts to be receptive to your voice today. For we pray in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Brother Percy, and we pray that each of you will be forever blessed in your purpose for God the Father. What a word. Oh, the bitter shame and sorrow, hymn number 170. Please stand as we sing this hymn, our closing hymn.
Can we just pause there for a moment, please? If you've followed through on this song, the last line is all of self. The writer realizes that there is something more to life. And the second verse says, some of self and some of thee. The third says, less of self and more of thee. And on the last verse it says, none of self. Completely yielding to Christ. Christ for salvation. So I'm going to ask this morning, in this service, I'm not going to make it really, you know, in the Methodist Church, we don't like to let people see us coming forward. We don't like that. We, but if you're really a person that wants to make yourself committed to Christ and all, you might be a Christian, but you, uh, Lord, I'm coming to say, yes, I'm satisfying you. If you haven't made a commitment, you stand over here. If you, made, if you are a Christian and you want to let this congregation know that you are standing for Christ in this world, then while we sing this hymn, please come. So oh dear God, this morning, we've had two faithfuls who are willing to say, I'm standing at the front of this congregation to let them know that I'm standing for you. And I'm going to live my life for you, no matter the cost. And so gracious God, let us get out of our pious feeling and be come committed to you and being committed to you is being willing to share yes. and to let the world know that we are yours and so guide us heavenly father in that vein we pray in Christ's name amen let us join now in our mission statement to worship God joyfully, offer Christ faithfully, promote growth hopefully, serve others lovingly. And so, Heavenly Father, dismiss us now with your blessing. Go with us through the week. Guide and direct us in your path that you choose for us. May our eyes be opened, our ears unstopped, and our hearts receptive to your word, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.